On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Friday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, in the morning you have to the name Friday the day when Mr. Smile smile upon some of the ones and ones them pocket. So while you are out there in these streets from Moran Point to Negril Point, safe travel, pan the gravel and as always my peeps continuously look out on a corner yai kazwa the old dirty corner boy them always out there alerts yeah man me i tell you so watch this now my peeps we're gonna kick it off with a missing person report this one is of this female presently on your screen identified as karina gibson Said to be 31 years of age, her profession, a hairdresser. She hails from the community of Waterhouse in St. Andrew. Now, Karina Gibson, otherwise known as Kimmy, it is said that she texted her mother sometime around 8.30 a.m. last Saturday, stating that she was going to the parish of St. Elizabeth to tend to two of her clients. She's a hairdresser, as I stated earlier. So the client is said to be a mother and her daughter. Now, bear in mind, the clients are not new clients. These clients have been around for quite some time. So the mother has prior knowledge to these particular clients. No, she did not thought of asking her daughter about the exact location that's the mother she didn't really think about it much because as i stated earlier she knows about these two persons that she always traveled to saint elizabeth to do their ear the mother stated that she asked her daughter karina gibson aka kimmy to message her as soon as she arrives at the location in saint elizabeth now it is said that she did not reach out to her mother. But the question is now. She has her boyfriend. Her fiancé to be exact. Now he mentioned that he was texting her all day Saturday. And also Sunday of last week. He stated that he woke up. And got ready for work. He called her exactly at 6.13 a.m. He stated that she told him that she was going to be finished with the mother's hearing a few. And then she will just be putting on a wig for the daughter. So that won't take her a long time. That should be done within an hour or so. It is stated that they agreed that's the fiance and the missing woman that the fiance will pick her up in spanish town sometime around 8 30 a.m on sunday now it is stated that he went to spanish town parked and was waiting on her for hours so time passed sometime around 10 a.m he decided to call her to say hey where are you but no answer. It is said that he continued to call and call and call and no answer. It is said that he called her younger brother and asked if he heard from the missing female. And unfortunately, the younger brother said no. 
It has been over five days since the family members have last heard from her. The family members are also stating that it is very much unlike Karina to go an entire day, much less almost a week, without reaching out to her mother, her mother, siblings, fiancé, everyone is seemingly worried. Now anyone knowing the whereabouts of this female presently on your screen identified as Karina Gibson, but more popularly known in the hairdressing world as Kimmy, please alert the nearest police station. And as always, if you feel more confident reaching out to Andespot News Media or any like-minded vlogger, please do so and furnish us with the information. We will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Yeah, man. So anyway, make we continue. So watch this now, my peeps. Between Wednesday night and this morning, Friday morning, one would I believe, say, I eight people lose them three pints. Between Wednesday and this morning, two between Wednesday night and Thursday morning, and six between Thursday and this morning. Can you imagine that? So watch this. Wednesday going into Thursday morning, the body of an unidentified male was found along Pichan Street with what appears to be some holy pecan up wounds that are in the Kingston Western Police Division. In the Kingston Central Police Division, the criminal element presently on your screen that I spoke about in yesterday's vlog, identified as Michael Burrett, otherwise known as Bloods, said to be 28 years of age. Come from out of Dunkirk, there so is a old dirty kind of boy, a old knackis and clappis, but go on with himself and the man them just circle him and murder him. Now, Bloods was said to be one of the trigger men behind the knockings and clappings of a reputed gang leader from out of Dunkirk known as Popeye. I spoke about that some time ago, a few months back when time Popeye met his demise. Now, between yesterday and this morning, the St. Catherine North Police get a knockings and clappings, a fatal one and also injuries in terms of knockings and clappings. Now a man, this brother here, presently on your screen, end up lose theme tree pints over there in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. He has since been identified as Jason Clark. Now two other men end up get can up in a theme fatal knockings and clappings. Also, in the Kingston Western Police Division, I got talk extensively on this one after I finish giving you the compilation. The fatal knockings and clappings of a man identified as Shaquille Ferran, 28 years old. It is said that he was walking through a shortcut. I come from work, he worked on a separate. And the man them can him up, leaving him lifeless. As I stated, I will be speaking on uh, this particular knockings and clappings after me giving you the roundup. The next fatal knockings and clappings come from out of the Kingston Central Police Division in Alman Town, a section of Alman Town known as Campbelltown, where a man identified as O'Shane Smith, otherwise known as Madded, end up lose theme three pints. Now I covered a vlog a few months ago on that particular criminal element. This vlog presently on your screen where I made mention of this criminal element. He never eat to the warning and now my dead end up get the can in. <laughs> yeah man. So anyway, the next knockings and clappings took place over there in the Huntsby era in the St. Andrew's South Police Division where a man identified as Spencer Okari Spencer end up lose theme tree pints. Now the next knockings and clappings took place down a uh, Westmoreland in a Negril, a place known as Good Hope in Negril. 
Now, the man who end up lose theme three points is said to be identified as Arville McDonald, 23 years old. It is said that he was taken out in a hail of bullets by unknown assailants while it's traveling on the Good Hope Main Road in Negril, Westmoreland. Now, the next fatal knockings and clappings took place again in the St. Andrews South Police Division in a section known as Olympic Gardens, right at the Grandison Avenue here at Esso. Now, the man who ended up lose theme three points has since been identified as Andre Lewis, but more popularly known as Russian in the streets. The next knockings and clappings is a police fatal knockings and clappings. So, this was not counted in the eight we lose them three points between Wednesday and this morning. Now, this police fatal knockings and clappings took place in Ramble in a place known as Forest in Ramble in Hanover. Now, the police stated that they came under gun attack from a criminal element identified as Romario Malcolm, presently on your screen but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Maka. Now this criminal element here has been listed as Hanover's most wanted. I will get into that in a subsequent newscast. And the next fatal police knockings and clappings took place in Clarendon in four parts. Now, that fatal knockings and clappings was of a criminal element identified as Orandi West, otherwise known as Spoogie, said to be 27 years of age. So Spoogie, the criminal element to end up lose theme three pints, ironically, come from a place known as Folly Bush in Clarendon. <laughs> yeah, man. Now, in a brief statement from the Clarendon police, it is stated that the wanted man was seen and accosted by a policeman. It is said that he pulled a knife and stabbed at the officer. Now the officer in a bid to save his own life pulled his firearm and can him up leaving him lifeless. One thing I can tell you now, you can't bring knife, go gun war, that no work out. But anyway, Indicom says it's a controversial knockings and clappings. So they most definitely will be investigating that one. Yeah, man. So in a way, make we get into the meat of the matter right now. So on Monday, the 15th of July, 2024, sometime in the night there, this 17-year-old youth here, said to be a student of the Tivoli Gardens Comprehensive High School in the Kingston Western Police Division, was brutally gunned down in a section of Denham Town known as Drunker Town. Now, for those who is not fully aware of where Drunker Town is, if you know the original set of building them, what them call Fort Storage, right across from Fort Storage, that is where you find Drunker Town. Now this little youth here end up lose theme three pints. He has since been identified as Jermaine Mackenzie, only 17 years old. Now it is said that he have some family member that criminal elements want him head and they saw him and decide say he should pay the ultimate price with his life by sending a signal to the family members that they want. Now I stated in the vlog where I covered extensively the happenings that took place that horrific and brutal night. And I stated clearly in that vlog that reprisal will most definitely be a must. Now it is said that the little youth definitely not involved in and nothing where I go on. You can't choose the family that you're born into. And of course, many I say, boy, I'm should a little bit smarter than that, knowing the background I'm people in. And him should have definitely not find himself up in the belly of the wheel, so to speak, given the fact that we have an ongoing gang war between Denham Town and also 
Tivoli Gardens. That long-standing gang war has been happening since the Tivoli incursion in 2010. So basically, it's a 14 years long gang war. Now the little youth, as I stated, made an arrow to find himself on enemy grounds, given the fact that his family members is wanted, and he's also from Tivoli Gardens, where the Denham Town criminal elements are having a feud over control of the Kingston Western space. Now the little youth end up reached there, so. Two criminal elements who claims to be the Dons for that particular section known as Drunkertown. This criminal element are presently on your screen known as Carlos Scarlet, but them call him Rasta in the streets. And his criminal counterpart identified as Adrian Smiles, but more popularly known in the streets as Fargo. It is said that Carlos held on to the 17-year-old, grabbed him up in his shirt and said, Hey boy, I wear a dope ya. You know, no, say you must come a man grung. It is said that the little youth literally peed his pants and begging for his life. It is said that Fargo pop out him gun and slap several cans into the small frame body of the 17 year old, leaving him lifeless. Now, as I stated in that vlog, that that is going to spark an all-out war because the area has been having a sort of what I would call a tense calm for the past couple of weeks, couple of months, maybe. And now this definitely aggravate the whole situation even more. Now, last night, Another innocent person end up lose theme tree pines. Now on your screen is the man that I stated earlier that I will be speaking on extensively. He has since been identified as Shaquille Ferran. Some people call him Orion in the streets. Young enough you too. The youth are come from work, him work them a separate. And him a trad true. I come reach him yard. And it is said that criminal elements aligned to Tivoli Gardens seize the opportunity to take theme tree pints in reprisal for the knockings and clappings of the 17-year-old German Mackenzie. Yeah man. So basically the man them say, you take one hour innocent, we are take one of no innocent. Now I'm stating this to persons living in and around Denham Town. The persons living in the affected areas. Who no need to take a stand because this now got done no time soon. So basically. The man them from Denham Town I got take another innocent from Tivoli. And then Tivoli man, I got do the same thing. So guess what? Probably your family member or even you may fall victim to this ongoing gang war. Where anybody or anybody basically, once you come from a certain place, third settings will be the order of the day. Just like this innocent Utah. Shaquille Ferran, a.k.a. Orion. So as far as on the spot news media, see this thing right and on. Carlos and Fargo got to go. More so Fargo. And the thing about this thing, you know, my peeps, Fargo is presently out on bail for your murder. Fargo has a case going on presently in the court. Now for those who is from that era, I'm pretty sure when you remember when time Fargo got slapped with the youth of them call Daddy over the scheme. And the reason for that fatal knockings and clappings is because scheme and them, 
it's Slapway. One of Fargo friend them we known as Alex. So Fargo catch a case for Slapway, the youth known as Daddy in the scheme. So Fargo have a case presently. So this just goes to show that these criminal elements, you know, are leopards that never changes their spots. And a hunger two things alone can cool them. One can cool them somewhat and the other is a permanent cool down. Is either 35 years to life or six feet under. Yeah, man. Because when you have the youths them in the communities, them not here, them just going around taking the people's life wantonly without care and feel like they must walk up and down and have for them life. No, and a sudden thing work. Once you feel like say it is okay for you to take somebody's life, then it is okay also for you to lose yours or lose your freedom. So now the onus is on you, residents of Denham Town. If you push out Carlos and Fargo to the police, and I know that some of you will not do so because you don't see them as full modern day heroes, you don't see them as uno protectors. But let me tell you this don't be fooled, they are not your protectors. They are the ones that will make you and your family members' lives in danger. Now, if you don't go do it for yourself, do it for Shaquille Ferran, you don't know that Orion no mix up in the Bangarang, and because of what them do, make Orion end up lose Fiend Tree Pines, a word to the wise. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.